and the future legends who wear it now. No matter the pounding, no matter the obstacle, NFL throwbacks Gale Sayers, Deacon Jones, Ray Nitschke, and Champion stand up to any challenge and win. Champion in the NFL, a winning team for over 75 years. Once upon a time, pro football was played with more passion than pretense. By fierce, proud men wanting only a chance to compete. There was no television, no million dollar contracts, no glory. Still, men were drawn to the game. Men who played for pocket change, for the love of the sport. Men such as Slingin' Sammy Baugh. I don't think they had superstars in those days. You were just a football player and you did your job and that's about what it mattered to. Today, we have superstars. Some of our contemporary greats exhibit the classic winning virtues of yesteryear. Men such as Jerry Rice, whose work ethic and training regimen are old school tough. Men such as Chris Spielman, a linebacker whose trademark toughness would have made the founding fathers smile. If I ever lay on the football field, which I never have, but if I do, please, one of your crew, carry a pistol at our games and come out and just put me away. That's being tough. Defensive tackle John Randall. Defensive end Bruce Smith. Modern day chips of a tough old block. I made up my mind that I was not taking any prisoners and the wounded would be shot. Detroit's Barry Sanders, a humble superstar, blazing broken fields. Green Bay's Brett Favre, a quarterback with vintage old-time sensibilities. Favre is on the run. Favre is down the sidelines. Favre, touchdown! He dived into the end zone, and the Packers score with 14 seconds to go. What a lunge by Brett Favre. I've never seen anything like it, Jim. What a play. What a way to get this team into the playoffs. San Francisco is a city of sights, and none is more cherished than Jerry Rice. He's widely regarded as the greatest receiver ever, an accolade he was aiming at before he ever played a single down. As you uh, go into the pros, what goals have you set for yourself? Well, number one, uh, I would like to be the all-time receiver. Uh, they have some great receivers here, and I'm trying to follow in their footsteps. Rice has done exactly that, and then some. In his style, one can find traces of the game's immortals, the precise roots of Raymond Barry, the speed of Lance Allworth, and the hands of Fred Bolitnikov. Rice shares a special bond with each of these three Hall of Famers. For although the way the game is played has changed, the fundamental reason of why it is played has not. It's really just for the love of the game. You know, I still have to pinch myself because uh, I can't believe some of the things I have done here. Highway 101 belongs to Jerry Rice. Next exit, Hall of Fame! I always have set high standards for myself and I would work hard to try to achieve those. I think the way I prepare myself during the off season uh, helps me during the season. And it's a very difficult workout. Uh, whenever I challenge this hill, I make it a purpose not to quit. 
If there's no one else around, uh, I'm not going to quit. You can endure this hill. You can endure anything because you're going to be tested. You know, that's just like the fourth quarter and you got a minute left in the ball game. If you're tired, uh, either you're going to quit or somehow you're going to dig down deep and make that play to win the football game. For the end zone, right face, he's got it! Touchdown 49ers! I think people, they they looking for me to, to slow down, to lose a step now so they can say, well, Jerry's losing it, but I'm not going to give them that opportunity. Oh! Rice's old-fashioned work ethic is surprisingly old-fashioned in its source. You know, if I didn't love this game, I wouldn't be doing this. Rice is a lover of the game, but he's also a learner. His careful roots and sure hands originate from a methodical process of self-analysis. I would prefer to catch the ball right here. If I catch it right here, I can put the ball away, also brace myself for the hit, and just roll up, roll up field and uh, get ready to explode downfield. For Rice, every cut is examined, every move replayed, yet the end result of his scientific approach often resembles fine art. Watches it down the right side, Rice is there, oh my! A one-handed catch down the sidelines, one of his greatest catches! A lot of guys look at film and, and they're not critical on themselves, and if you're not critical on yourself, uh, you're not going to reach your uh, potential. Whether in a game or in practice, Rice hates to drop a pass. His work habits and self-critical attitude are reminiscent of the Baltimore Colts' Raymond Barry. I hated to drop a football. It uh, was what really motivated me to find some way not to drop them. And so that led to studying catching, defining it, and then uh, developing uh, a routine or a program in which uh, every day, every week, I just uh, drilled and drilled and drilled on making the catches that I did not know when they were going to come up in a game. I just knew they were sometime or another. What I learned, uh, you know, about the human body is that uh, if it's uh, trained and it's prepared, uh, if it is drilled, it will react when you're not even thinking. Many thought Barry's regimen obsessive, but his method wasn't fueled by madness. I'm not sure that people really understood that I wasn't doing that uh, strictly for the pleasure of it. It was a matter of necessity. I think a receiver at the professional level who gets by you know, without dominating speed, he's got to overachieve. Like Barry, Rice also faced doubts about his ability to turn on the Jets. You know, coming out of college, I was knocked because of my speed. I think it really I'm fast, as fast as I, I want to be. What a play by Jerry Rice as he simply outran the defense. You know, so many guys uh, that are faster, but when I put that uniform on, I believe I can't be caught. Uh, and if I get a step on you, I, I feel like I can't go the distance. An eight-yard gain into a 50-yard touchdown, and they say he's not fast. Oh, he flew by people yeah. on that. Speed was never an issue for Lance Olworth. He was off like a shot with each snap. What he shared in common with Rice was a deep-seated fear of failure, a fear that stemmed from an incident in his youth. My dad looked at me and, you know, he said, well, uh, he said, you think you played pretty good, didn't you? I said, yes, sir. You know, dad, I scored two touchdowns and I did this and I did that, and he said, well, You've had a great night, but I won't remember this. I said, no matter how good you are, no matter how good you are, there's always going to be somebody who can do a little bit better. And I went through my whole career looking for somebody like that, looking for somebody that's better than me, and to prove to him that I was that good. Allworth was not only good, he was the first AFL player inducted into the Hall of Fame, an honor that necessitated a call to dad. And I got on the phone, and I, my dad was on there, and I said, Dad, your son just got voted. I couldn't get out. I couldn't finish it. And uh, it made me think it's emotional to me even right now. <clears throat> and uh, I realized at that moment 
that all the things that I had done in professional football, I had been trying to prove to him that I was that good. Much like Allworth, Rice also enters each game haunted by a fear of failure. I'm scared. When I play scared, I, I play my best football. You know, I never go into a game where I feel like uh, this game is won, it's going to be an easy football game. As a professional athlete, you're really afraid of failure. Throws long for Rice down the sideline. He's got 77 yards! The failures have been few and far between for Rice, particularly when the stakes are highest. The bigger the game, the better he plays. I like having the weight on my shoulders. I think if you're going to be uh, the best receiver to ever play the game, you're going to have to uh, be able to uh, take on the pressure of uh, making the big plays. Before Rice, a stickum covered Raider named Fred Belitnikoff also relished the opportunity to make the big play. I played in situations where I caught a lot of crucial passes, so I couldn't really afford to put myself in a position of dropping a pass. My role was, you know, from the line of scrimmage to basically the deepest 20 yards downfield because, you know, I sure as hell wasn't going to beat anybody deep. Whatever his limitations, Belitnikov always found a way to score. His soft hands were the stuff of legend, and never were they more evident than in his MVP performance in Super Bowl XI. You know, th there's nothing more you can ask from, from football than going and winning a Super Bowl and being named most valuable player. If there's anybody's dream that plays football, that's it. You know, and that, that, that was it for me. You know, I was on cloud nine for quite a few weeks after, you know, for a year. <laughs> like Belitnikov, Rice also claimed MVP honors in his first Super Bowl. And that was only the beginning of a remarkable run. You know, it's something I'll never forget, and maybe next year I'll get a chance to come back again. Rice did come back, catching three touchdown passes in Super Bowl XXIV. The boy is going to party tonight! Hey! But it was his three touchdown performance in Super Bowl XXIX that left him as the undisputed king of the big game. You get uh, to a point where you feel like, okay, you're the best receiver in the game, and uh, you have to go out and uh, try to hold up to that tradition. Rice has not only held up to that tradition, he's raised the standard for the future. As with other outstanding players, the source of his greatness can be narrowed to one basic drive. Whenever the ball is up in the air, I believe the ball belongs to me. And that's the attitude that you have to have. That attitude has put Rice in the company of Raymond Barry, Lance Olworth, Fred Belitnikoff, and alone atop the record book. is the touchdown scorer of the century. I think after my career is all over, I have a chance to reflect back on all the records and uh, be able to really appreciate those. He's a bad man. He must be the greatest receiver. But as long as I can stay aggressive, make the big plays, uh, continue to stay around. This event, Bruce Smith has represented the Buffalo Bills in nine consecutive Pro Bowls. No doubt I have a game face. I, I definitely have a game face. Once I put that uniform on, it's just something that, that, that comes over me. Um, it's like I can't be beaten. If we're going to go into a battle, I'm not going to get my ass kicked. You're going to get your ass kicked. I think my play speaks for itself, and what I do on the field speaks so loudly, nobody can hear what I'm saying anyway. 
Viking defensive tackle John Randall has started in the last four Pro Bowls. Part of the game is feeling good when you're out there. That's what I do. Don't let them boys over there know you, baby. Introduce yourself to them. Ah! 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 What I feel like doing, I just, you know, that feeling I feel like doing, I just do it. They don't want to the methadone crew, huh? Yeah! <laughs> Sometimes I talk to the guard. Come on, waiting to be a man, block me by yourself. Talk to tackles. Hey, man. Hey, hold it. Hold it. Hold it on the big star in here. Rock and roll, baby. Rock and roll. I even talk to a quarterback. Hey, Kyler. Hey, Kyler, what's up, man? What up, homie? What up? What up, dog? Yes, sir. John Randall, rabbit, riled up. Relentless. 